In the workshop, a modified Southworth Engines 12-inch boiler feed pump built by Don English, part 10. In the last episode, when I tried it on steam, it just refused to work. It flatly refused. It just sat there at one end of the stroke. This video clip was recorded after the engine had cooled, and as is clearly evident, the machine is running perfectly. I have to confess that I've known all along why this pump didn't work, because I've had considerable experience with them in the past. I've lit the very small gas burner that I've fitted inside the firebox of the Castle Steam V6 boiler, and now I'm waiting for some steam. I've connected the pump so it takes water from a container and returns it to the container. And as soon as the boiler pressure reached 20 pounds per square inch, I opened the valve. Oh, and look, it's working. Surprise, surprise. There's a lot of water coming out of the exhaust because this is condensed steam. The first steam that hits a cold cylinder immediately turns to water, and quite a lot of it. But as soon as the steam cylinder end of the pump gets warm, it doesn't work. So this time I'm going to fix it. First of all, I'm removing all of the brass nuts and washers so I can get the steam chest cover off. This is the third time I've done this, so it's a bit of a deja vu, but this time I'm going to do it properly. My intentions were to make a new shuttle piston using stainless steel. The shuttle piston currently fitted to this engine is made from brass, and I did mention in the previous episode that maybe it was bent, but it's not bent at all. I went up to Blackgate's Engineering to buy some stainless steel, and while I was there, I asked the lovely Heather if she would just use a computer and Google the words coefficient of linear expansion. I was just looking for a chart showing the coefficient of linear expansion of different metals. In this clip, I'm removing the shuttle piston to have a look at it. This shuttle piston is made from a piece of brass. In the last episode, I cleaned it up in the lathe using some Scotch-Brite, and I also made the O-ring groove a little bit deeper. It's time to get technical. Using my micrometer, I check the diameter of each end. And this end of the shuttle piston is two thousandths of an inch under the three-eighths of an inch diameter that it's supposed to be. And as I thought all along, the problem is the thermal coefficient of linear expansion. I need to make the shuttle piston smaller. Not a lot smaller, just a little bit smaller. And for this, I'm not machining it, that would be too much. Instead, I'm using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper just to remove sufficient metal. I think I would like the shuttle piston to be five thousandths of an inch less than the diameter of the bore. What? You can't do that, it's really going to leak badly. Well, no it isn't, because it has an o-ring at the end, and it's the o-ring that makes the piston steam tight. Although I didn't show it, I machined the groove for the o-ring a little bit deeper. First I did one end, and then I turned it round in the chuck and did the other end. So where did I get to? Oh yes, I was in the Blackgate's engineering office with the lovely Heather, trying to find a data sheet on the coefficient of linear expansion for different metals. After a while, I found the information that I needed. While I was at Blackgate's engineering, I bought some new O-rings as well. Here they are. Standard 3 8 of an inch diameter, silicone rubber, steam grade O-rings. After applying copious amounts of steam oil to both of the cylinders in the casting, I replaced the shuttle piston. And it really is very free now, because don't forget, the shuttle piston is now 5 thousandths of an inch less in diameter than the two shuttle valve holes in the main casting. And now it's definitely going to work. At the end of the last episode when I ran the pump on compressed air it was a little bit wheezy, but this wasn't down to the shuttle piston. I did notice some small pieces of gasket material in the steam chest, and maybe one of these particles got stuck under one of the slide valves. The story so far, the shuttle piston has now been reduced by five thousandths of an inch in diameter, and I increased the depth of the grooves where the o-rings fit. In this next clip, I'm going to make a slight modification. This is the cover that fits at the outer end of the steam chest. I need to make it so that if the shuttle piston sticks, I won't have to take off the entire cover to give the piston a push. I've marked the centre position of it and I'm now drilling it, tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. I'm using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap to thread the hole. All I need to do now is to just clean up the surfaces of the end cover, which I'm currently doing. Then I fitted a blanking plug in the hole and refitted the cover. And now, it's time to test the pump and see whether it works. OK, I'll stop stalling and give you the answer as to why the steam pump didn't work. This coefficient of linear expansion I've mentioned several times. What is it and what's going on? 
It's all down to the expansion of different metals when they're heated, and the amount of expansion varies directly relative to the temperature. I found a chart and here are the figures. I was only really interested in the number for each of the metals used in the pump. The shuttle piston is made from brass, and this has a coefficient of linear expansion of 19. I assume that the higher the number, the greater the expansion. The cylinders for the shuttle piston are machined in the steam chest, which is made of gunmetal, and gunmetal has a coefficient of linear expansion of 18, so that doesn't expand quite as much. I'm sure lots of experts are going to write in and tell me all sorts of things about this, but the basic thing is this. Just watch the next part of the video. I rest my case, QED, Quadrat Demonstrandum. The pump works beautifully and when I slow it down, listen to the exhaust beat. Those beats are crisp. This engine is beautifully machined. I cannot sing the praises of Don's engineering anymore. The oil pump needs adjusting, it's squeaking a bit, insufficient oil. I'll adjust the oil pump shortly to deliver more oil. I've shown how to do this, I think, in a previous episode. Look at the pressure it's running on. This is ridiculous. It shouldn't be pumping at all. My boiler's run out of gas, so it's back to compressed air. No squeaking now, because I adjusted the oil pump to make it deliver more oil. This is running in slow motion, and you can really hear how even the exhaust beats are. In the shuttle piston end cover, I fitted a cylinder drain cock, which seemed like a good idea. I just hit freeze frame on the video because I have one more thing I need to mention. This shuttle piston is quite small. In all of these pumps, relative to the size of the slide valve that the shuttle piston is moving, it's quite small. And the slide valve is held against the port face by the pressure of the steam in the steam chest. The slide valve is large, and the shuttle piston is small and it's the same steam pressure that moves the shuttle piston. And that's why the fit and seal of the shuttle piston in the cylinders at each end of the steam chest is critical. I think that's just about covered it. I should make a series called Brain Surgery for Beginners, or maybe not. That's it for this video, and all I have to say now is, as usual, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.